Good morning, everybody. Pleasure to be here. It's, uh, I was here last year, so it's good to provide a, an update. You know, we're in the middle of construction, so lots of things have been going on, so I'm, it's a pleasure to be here to present it. Eric is the general manager, and, and uh, I've, I've filled in for him for, for this year again. Uh, hopefully, if it shows up next year, but he's kind of busy, so we'll leave it to me. Uh, the forward-looking statements here in terms of cautionary notes, just the usual thing here, so nothing surprising here. Just don't uh, take everything with a grain of salt with this presentation, right? Uh, it's, it's not to be meant to be relied upon uh, in terms of uh, for investing purposes and other activities. The agenda is the process overview, project overview, health, safety, environment, uh, operations update, and the employee Employment opportunities. We're always looking for people, so it's always uh, an important part of our, you know, uh, going out and trying to find people. The history here of the project, right, really can be divided into three areas. One is, you know, all the underground mining that happened between 1930 and 1970. It was a lot of underground mines, lots of activity. Then someone comes in with a good idea and says, hey, let's do some exploration and let's see what, you know, the area offers. So between 2008 and 2000 and basically 21, right, we have a lot of activity, drilling, feasibility studies, pre-fees, you name it, and really firming up the project. And then you get into, of course, where you get into trying to, you know, obviously having some partners, owners that come in and say, hey, hey this is a good project and we should be building here. And that happened with Orion uh, uh, Financial Services. And, and also with um, uh, Equinox Gold as partners. So, so we had the pre-production um, in terms of confirmation of doing the work from April to September of 21. So that allowed us you know, to get some basic infrastructure going and up, uh, you know, in place before the actual construction decision, which happened in October 21. So we're basically you know, 18 months into this project in terms of actual build from uh, September of that year. The uh, site layout, uh, the, the mine, as you see in terms of the top right-hand corner is the open pit and just the various waste dumps. Uh, right in the middle there, where's the blue area, is where the, where the, the mouse pointer works. Thank you very much. Uh, in terms of the plant site facilities, right? And then we have the tailing storage facility down below. And if you notice, there's, I've talked a lot last year about the infrastructures that had to be relocated, you know, quite a big investment in different areas. I just briefly touch upon it, right, where the Trans-Canada Highway right here runs right through the pit at some point. Uh, but we've relocated that along with another number of other infrastructures in the area. Health, safety, environment. We've been uh, 3 million hours worked without a lost time uh, uh, incident. So which for us is an amazing achievement and we hope to continue that. The focus, you know, is always on safety. You know, it is there, it, you just cannot, you have to be relentless, you have to be always on top of it and you, and you have to set a high standard. And even with that, right, it is a challenge, but it can be done. The, on the environment side, we, you know, our permits are in place, the, the monitoring plans are in place. Uh, we had an independent tailings review board in, since 2017 in terms of the design oversight of the TMF. And the closure plan was filed and ongoing updates and financial assurance as well was submitted in Q1 of 20, 2022. So we're, so we're in good shape overall, uh, but it's obviously, it's, like I said, it requires a fair bit of investment and time and we're and happy to do that to make sure we meet our uh, requirements. Uh, the region, in terms of you know typical mine, big investment, big capital, big opex, and it's a pretty big investment for for uh, our community of uh, Geraldton area. No, um, quite a bit of employment and economic development, and with our indigenous communities. I, 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 there was one slide at the beginning that I failed to; uh, it didn't come up, but I think, or it jumped ahead in terms of recognizing the community where we work is is in Treaty Nine, and is with in the in the uh, the, uh, the, the First Nations land of AZA, Airline First Nations, Gnumi First Nation, Long Lake 58 First Nation, and the Métis Nation of Ontario. My apologies. The Indigenous relations in terms of, we have 24 contracts in terms of the construction. That's $180 million in terms of commitments. That's about 20% of project con contracted value. And some of these services and logistics uh, joint ventures will continue in the operational phase. 
There's also, uh, which is quite a good thing to have, is we have a Conogamous as Investment Corp, which is a partnership between the four First Nations that have come together and work with us to a potential involvement with the building of a new provincial police station. And so that, that, that is a good initiative and other initiatives are, we are hoping to build upon that. In terms of community relations, there's a, we've established a sustainability committee. And so that's really to engage the community. We, we do a number of things. We do annual barbecues. We just had one last year, last week, site tours as well of the actual facility. So well received by the community and we, and we hope and wish to have that community, strong community support going forward. The, there's certain investments, as you can tell here, in terms of the bullet points um, and in terms of the actual purchasing of some infrastructure, some funding, and, and that is just the partnership and, and how we wanted things to continue. Project highlights, uh, typical, typical mine, typical processing plant, open pit. The only thing I would say that's uh, slightly different is we have a high pressure granny row. It's not very common in Canada. Uh, our, one of our, uh, another operation close by here is also uh, has a high pressure granny row, but overall that's the, really not much difference in the, in the facilities for an open pit. Uh, for this project here, it was based upon proven probable reserves of 5.5 million ounces, uh, grade slightly over a gram, annual production first five years is 400,000 ounces, it's, it trims down a bit afterwards. Our uh, first production is in H1 first half of 2024. So it's coming up very, very soon here. It's just uh, it's less than basically a year away. Uh, this is a 3D rendering. Um, so you've noticed here in terms of the primary crusher ramp, primary crusher. Uh, here's the secondary crusher. Here's their high pressure grinding row area and the truck shop and where you come in through the site here. And just in terms of the, and the other thing of point here in terms of infrastructure is we have a power plant uh, that we generate our own electricity. And in terms of the leach tanks, detox, thickener, and in terms of the east end building with the mill, the gravity tower in east and in the mills are, and just the processing of the following, following the uh, ball mills. So in the previous slides, right, I showed you in terms of the history, right, from 1930s uh, to now, and we got the official approval to go ahead in October of 21. So this was December, right? So this is the construction group that's come on board, you know, and they're trying to get things set up and it's just in terms of highlight it, right? In terms of where everything needs to go. And basically all we have here is a construction office and a lot of vehicles. So really that's the, that's the picture or the starting point, right? With, with, the, with the activities and trying to get some things going, right? In terms of December of 21. Uh, switching to May of 23, this is basically where we're at. And so they've done a really good job on the construction group. I'm more, you know, obviously focused on the operations in terms of the handover afterwards, but certainly they've done a, a bang up job of uh, getting us to this point at this time. And this 3D, the 3D rendering, this is somewhat reversed, but yeah, as you can tell in terms of the, you know, the crushing, the, the stockpile, the HPGR, truck shop and then the administration building and everything else has come on board here, right? And the permanent water treatment plant and some of the process ponds nearby. Here's the picture of the power plant. You know, it doesn't seem like much in terms of the picture here. I think it was over 150 C containers that came in, right, to, you know, to basically retrofit this building to get it installed. And that's just the, the components within it. So it's a, uh, it's quite a, quite, quite a big uh, undertaking to build an own power plant. We're quite fortunate there's a natural gas trunk, the main trunk line runs just north of Geraldton, the town. And so we ran a 14 kilometer spur line to feed into this power plant. And it'll provide all of our electricity and we will be off the grid. And that's simply because uh, it wasn't just timing and the capacity of the existing Hydro One line was insufficient. Uh, we have two mills um, and we have a gravity tower. So here you're getting into the east end of the building and the, and the mills are basically, the shell is installed right now at the moment and we're progressing uh, on the activities inside. And here's a view of, in terms of the, uh, uh, the lake, Conogamus's Lake. And here is from looking down, uh, basically looking west. Here's the truck shop. And in terms of this, this, this uh, eight bays here, 
Uh, so we're reasonably well set up from an infrastructure to maintain our equipment as well. On the other side of, the, of this truck shop here is the warehouse. And we plan to install another addition to another warehouse here to provide the storage here. So like I say, in terms of uh, construction providing the tools that we need, we're in pretty good shape. Process plant design, I just mentioned here in terms of 10 million tons a year, 27,000 tons. Uh, grind size is around 90 microns. And basically with gravity concentration as well with, uh, with intensive leach. Uh, just another picture in terms of the conveying system set up. So we're, we're uh, well on the way in terms of connecting all the buildings. The uh, plant site. So one of the goals that the construction group had uh, last fall was to, was to enclose the buildings, right? Because it's extremely cold weather and we needed to have it done by, by you know, early the winter because in order for them to get inside and install all the equipment and electronics and, and instrumentation and piping and everything else that goes with it. So they managed to meet that challenge and now they're, you know, they're meeting towards uh, being on target to be able to you know, get the project going. And certain things in terms of the cranes, right, all installed, they're able to use the cranes inside. And in terms of the focus, as I mentioned here, in terms of piping, electrical now going on. The overall project is 73% complete. Um, and if in terms of you notice here, in terms of the commissioning of the, you know, the various activities that have been completed, uh, the mine pre-production October, which I will talk about in a few more slides, the commissioning of the power plant, Q3, Q4, uh, TMF available, highway, as well as mentioned, it, because it's right in the pit, so we're right now mining to the south of the highway, and the commissioning in Q1 of 24, and the first goal in H1 of 24. So here's the pit, and this was in January. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's getting going, and we started in October. Um, you know, I was we, in the site tours last week, we were talking about how the first five, six months of mining that we did in terms of the ramp up, in about a year and a half from now, that will be basically what we will do in one month. So things will really ramp up in the next, uh, next 18 months to get this mine at uh, about 70 million tons per year annum of uh, ex-pit movement. So we have the pleasure of, you know, in the mine, starting up slowly as opposed to the process plants, uh, but we did go to 24-7 operation in Q4 with four trucks and one loading unit. Seven million tons moved to date. Uh, so it's, we're moving along here. Uh, the road to the Taley uh, storage facility has been complete and we're basically placing a lot of rock in the Taley's management facility or storage facility to provide the buttressing for the dam. So that's one of the big uh, requirements for the waste rock this year, and that's going well. And in terms of the operation readiness, right, in terms of the, the actual processing plant. So this is the challenge, right, where you have construction, uh, they hand you the keys, and everything is trying to finish up really quickly, and you know, you have to take all, digest all that information, and pretty soon you have to run 24-7 operation in the plant, and make sure you have trained people and to do it safely. So that's the big challenge, and you can easily lose time, right? You know, you can easily lose time, and it's all about schedule. And where the mine can start up slowly, you know, a few trucks, uh, the plant doesn't have, have that uh, luxury. And that's a big focus of our, for, for myself and my team, is in terms of making sure we're, we are prepared when the construction hands the keys to us. Here's equipment status. Um, at the moment, eight trucks, uh, one shovel, two, two have been assembled, one is in operation. We're bringing in a Laternal loader as well in, uh, later this year. We have a pit viper that's come on board um, and some, some dozers and some graders and the normal support equipment. So this is all normal stuff and we'll, we'll start ramping up here in, in the fall with a second uh, loading unit, a third loading unit in December, January, and then the fourth and the fifth next year. And I can't, I can't have a presentation unless I mention employment opportunities. So if you know if anybody's looking for work, which probably not anybody who, but anyways, I'll leave it at that. Is, and the, the, the positions available are basically, they're, they're open. We've been doing pretty good overall. We've ramped up from like 30 or 40 people to about 200 people now in operations in the past year. So we're basically hiring one person every two days. 
and we need another over 100 people uh, over this year and another 100 or 150 next year. So it will just be you know, an ongoing process and my hat's off to the Human Resources Department for doing an excellent job. Thank you, any questions?